Hi, welcome. So today we're going to talk about AP psychology. So I've been an AP psych tutor for a few years now, and I thought maybe I'd make some videos to help out some other students. I work with a lot of students myself, but I thought maybe this way I could help some other students out there. So today we're going to start with AP uh, psychology unit one. And as you know, the College Board has put out a new curriculum for AP psychology. So we went from nine units now down to five units. So they're a little bit chunkier, they're a little bit more content within them, and they've kind of taken a bit of everything and put them all into these units. So the first one is biological basis of behavior. So we're going to start by looking at each individual section of unit one. So I'm going to start with one by one, I'll do a video on that. And I'm also going to do a key terms video to go with that. Because as I tell my students, under understanding and knowing the key terms for the psych unit is really important. So when you get to the test, you can draw on those, those terms, you can talk about them, you can apply them. So it's really important to know that. So we're going to do that sort of together. I'm going to do the 1.1 and I'm going to do the 1.1 key terms. And so at the same time, we're going to be looking at the CED put out by the College Board, the Course and Exam Description Booklet. And in there, the, the College Board basically tells you everything you need to know for the exam in May. So it's kind of clever actually. So we're gonna go through all the questions that the CED has put out and basically what you need to study. So we're gonna kind of break that down into slideshow. So I'm gonna play the slideshow while I'm talking so that if you wanna take notes, you have those notes, you can go back, you can go forward, you can stop, you can pause, you can do whatever you want really, but hopefully it makes it more interesting for you too and that you have these notes for class or for the exam, depending on when you're studying for this right now. Okay, here we go. Hey everyone, so welcome back to Learn With Me. And today, this episode, we're gonna focus on AP Psychology 1.1, which is the interactions of hereditary, heredity and environment. So today we're gonna to dive into one of the most heavily debated topics in psychology, which is the relationship between nature versus nurture, and that how it shapes our behavior and mental processes. Okay, so we're gonna start off, we're gonna use the CED question from the College Board, because that's actually where they're taking most well, they're taking all of their um, test questions for the exam from the CED. So it's really good to get familiar with these questions. So we're going to look at the question and we're going to break it down with some content to go with it. Okay, so the question is explain the relationship between heredity and environment in shaping behavior and mental processes. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so we're going to start. This is the key terms. Now, if you have my full slideshow and you have the booklet that goes with it, then you're going to be able to see the actual words and you're going to be able to find the definitions for them. I'm also going to make a separate video going through each of these words with a definition, an explanation, and a real life example, because it's really important for you to know all the key terms and to understand how to apply them before you get to the exam. Okay, so we're going to start off with. Um, heredity. Okay, it's also known as nature. And this refer refers to the genetic material that we get from our parents. So we're going to look at three key points when we talk about that. Okay, so we're going to talk about genetic predisposition. So what does that mean exactly? That means that our genes influence our biological makeup. And that includes physical traits like your height, your eye color, as well as your temperament and vulnerability to certain diseases. So that's kind of important. And that comes down to heredity and nature. The second one we're going to look at is heritability. That is the concept of how we measure the variations in the trait within a population that can be att attributed to those genetic differences. So for instance, traits like height have a high heritability because they're strongly in influenced by the genes. So that's also important. And then the last one is genetic disorders because certain behaviors and mental processes are directly impacted by genetic disorders, such as like Down syndrome or Huntington's disease, which can affect cognitive abilities and emotional functioning. And you might've actually studied some of these in your biology class, or if you're even doing AP bio, you're going to go into a lot of these details that we're going to cover in AP psych. There's a really close link. I almost call it like the trilogy of APs when you take AP bio, AP psych, and AP stats all together because they're really is so much overlap. Okay, so now we're going to go into the next slide, which is environment. So when we talk about environment, that's our nurture. So that encompasses all the external influences that we uh, are in, like sort of in 
touch with from birth onward. So we're going to look at four different points here. We're going to look at your family environment. So that's the parenting style, socioeconomic status, family dynamics that plays a real role in shaping our behavior and mental processes. So for example, if you have supportive nurturing environment, that tends to foster positive social behaviors in children. So that's the nurture side. And we're going to look at peer influence. So peer influence is where peers and social groups will impact our behavior and attitudes. So peer pressure, friendships, that, that can all have an effect on academic performances, risk-taking behavior, and many more things. So that's kind of that peer influence. So, you know, when your parents say, you know, pick your friends wisely, that's probably what they're talking about, right? You want to surround yourself with like-minded people. You want to surround yourself with those positive people because that's the nurture part of the nature versus nurture. We're going to talk about cultural context. Cultural beliefs and values influence how we perceive the world and behave, including norms around our communication, our emotional expression. That's all rooted in our cultural surround, what we surround ourselves culturally with. Okay, and the last one is education and learning. So formal education obviously shapes our cognitive development. It, in, it includes problem solving skills, academic achievements, all of those educational opportunities can really enhance or limit our genetic potentials. Okay, the next slide we're going to look at is interaction and interdependence. So we're gonna look at how nurture and nature don't just operate in isolation, they kind of interact in dynamic ways. So let's explore this interaction. So first of all, we're gonna look at gene environment interaction. So our genes and environments influence each other. So for instance, a genetic predisposition to depression could be triggered by a, stress, a stressful life event or lessened by supportive relationships. So it's that, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship of that gene environment interaction. The other one we're going to look at is epigenetics. And these are going to come up in the key terms, by the way, because these are words that are going to come up in an exam or an MCQ. So really important. Epigenetics. This, this field studies how environmental factors like diet and stress can affect gene expression without changing the DNA sequence. So these changes can impact our behavior and mental processes. So that is epigenetics. We're going to go a little bit more into that later. And you're going to look at it when we do the key terms. And like I said, if you're doing AP Bio, you're also probably going to be talking a little bit about that when you do the genetics unit. Okay, the last, uh, the, sorry, not the last one, the next one is developmental pathways. So we're going to look at developmental pathways and how um, they're influenced by the interplay of nature versus nurture. Okay, so we're going to talk about biological embedding. Sounds like a big word, but really, you know, it just means that early experiences can have lasting effects on our brain structure and function. So for example, if you have start childhood stress, well, that could impact your mental health resilience later in life. So basically how that works together. And then we're going to look at transactional processes. And that just means development in a, is a feedback loop where genetic predisposition influence how we interact with our environment, which in turn shapes our ongoing development. So you can see the circle together, right? So that nurture and nature, they do work together and they are reliant on each other. So I'm going to wrap things up by saying understanding the complex relationship between nature versus nurture helps us appreciate how both our biology and our experiences shape who we are. It highlights why considering genetics and environment is crucial in psychological research and interventions. So don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and please subscribe to my channel for more AP psychology content. I'll also do be doing some videos for AP World, AP Biology coming up this, for the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.